speaker, he will be for Starin Bravo. He is the head of automotive at Intellius. And he, um, he said, I should not read all that was written here, um, but that he um, tries to really bring um, software development in, uh, auto, uh, in AI um, to automotive, and that he really wants to uh, develop things here which are important for the automotive industries. And so I think he better explains himself what he is doing. Thank you very much, uh, yes, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, who haven't met yet. Uh, it's always a bit of a challenge to uh, to speak after the after the lunch break because you know, everyone is digesting their the lunches and you know, not, not willing to, to listen to to get an honest speaker. Uh, well, my presentation to give you a quick highlights uh, to sort of boost an interest uh, is going to be a very different to what we hear. Uh, on this, uh, on this, uh, on this morning sessions, um, what we've seen is that now uh, the sensor technologies is advanced uh, within the automotive uh, under automotive industries. What the automotive industries OEMs and T ones can benefit, uh, benefit with, especially with regard to autonomous driving. And my take to you, my message to you is that you can get all of it. Okay, that's cool, but that's not good enough. It's simply not good enough to be a successful automotive, future successful automotive company. And why it's like that, I will try to explain in my presentation. Okay. Um, it seems that all the industry agrees that the car are no longer to be the same. Uh, likewise, in automotive companies, they are not going to be the same. They need to transition from what they currently have, and they have currently a very strong DNA in the production of a very solid piece of uh, hardware equipment uh, into something else. Uh, some analysts say that the product market for the car in three to five years might actually decline by half, meaning that the, the people and the way they consume this, this, this product is going to radically change, which leave their um, the, the existing automakers with their scarce level of, uh, of the revenue flows and their traditional business, business markets. Uh, in order not to become just the peers for the software companies, automotive companies need to find its way out of this, this dilemma and become something else. And this something else may be called as a data company. So instead of just selling the product, look at the car as the potential data generation and build your future businesses around this, this data that the car is, is generating. In order to do this transition, automotive companies need to go through something that many of us know as their digital transformation to them. I'm doing this kind of speeches on the series of the events, and every time I'm starting to speak about digital transformation, I'm starting from the following bold statement. Nobody knows what is, what is that. You can read. 10,000 different articles, and everyone is actually speaking about something different when it comes to, their, uh, to the digital transformation tech. But what seems to be a general agreement for automotive uh, industry specifically is that digital transformation is going to be enabled by their car connectivity, so that their data that is generated uh, in the vehicles will become available for the cloud, become available for the developer, and that it actually opens up their uh, the new possibilities for, for automotive company to actually build their the businesses around this data. Uh, there are three uh, generally accepted trends, uh, trends in the automotive industry. So first of all, this is a, about electricity, the way the car is moving, the way there, it sources of energy, uh, the way it's, it's actually built from, built from inside. Um, this, the car has become more autonomous and the, the essence of this uh, trend and this transformation is that the car, the way the user inter interacts with the car in this uh, famous UI UX uh, pattern is going to radically change. So instead of having one driver who is focusing for one, one hour per day on the road, you have a, a very loyal, solid customer sitting behind, well, not the wheel, but behind the windshield and having nothing to do. So then this is the time to be to be filled with some, some of their 
potentially their AI services that automotive companies might provide and actually benefit uh, benefit with their users and actually generate some, some more money. The third one is that the consumption model for the, for the car as the product is going to be changed. So it's going to be more and more shared, it's going to be more and more uh, service and subscription based and even some of the uh, current OEMs and T1s they already exploring uh, this, uh, this business model within the, within the traditional market. So for instance, you can buy a car um, subscription from, from Volvo. For instance, not sure if it, whether this is applicable to some of the German car cars, but that's actually true for, uh, for Volvo. Um, so what, it, what we have here in common? What we have here in common is that everything that relates to this three new trends, the key elements of this, this trends is that uh, it, it forced automotive businesses to change their traditional business model and, and seek for something else. And this something else is actually how to get the data, a proper data set out of this uh, phenomenon, out of these trends and this technology that support these trends, and how to, to monetize that. Um, and that is an important thing. Uh, if you want to, to understand how, how to monetize this data, you need to get this data in some, some way or another into the cloud and then figure out the solution and the use cases and application around it. Well, this transition product to data company is not a unique thing. There are a number of examples in the related industry where we can see this transition. To give you a few examples that, for instance, their, their famous Apple story that is actually transitioned from their product company to their ecosystem player to their thanks to the iTunes and Apple Store um, uh, Apple Store uh, uh, platform they built up the, the, the systems and they arguably successfully transitioned from uh, from a simply a product company to more an ecosystem player. Google has uh, transitioned from the service uh, search service and web company to uh, for instance Android uh, Android ecosystem player where they enable uh, hundreds and thousands of different OEMs to feature with their platform on their, on their hardware and get access and gain their, uh, their, the, the leverage, the, the, the platform functionality through their Google Play and, and other offerings that they have. Interestingly, uh, for the automotive specifically, uh, the story of Amazon, that is transitioning from a digital store, the e-commerce, to one of the largest, if not the largest, I think, that this is already the largest infrastructure service, service provider uh, in, the, in, the whole, in the whole world. Interesting that, um, well, there are a number of other examples in this, uh, in this row. You can uh, re remember the case of uh, uh, Salesforce, that is a transition from CRM to, to more a platform for Customer relationship and customer engagement, the class end with the famous software development life, life cycle support tools, and others. Uh, each one is having a unique way of how do they transition from, uh, from, from that. And some have, have a very specific and unique uh, feature set on their platform. Uh, but if you want to, to, to learn more about these stories and how this apply to your automotive, I would kindly. Uh, welcome you to, to our Medium blog where we specifically write on the different platform uh, related topics as well as the automotive, software automotive topics. We actually explore these uh, this transitions in, uh, uh, very much in, in, that, in that blog in, in greater details. Um, interesting that their business literature when it comes to this transition has actually come up with a number of useful models and in order to save your time I try to combine what uh, what academia is uh, is actually saying about uh, business transformations. Um, they figured out a number of features that helps you to assess the, the level of readiness of a specific OEM, or generally speaking, any automotive vendor uh, company. How can you transition and become their instead of a product company, become a data company? So you will likely start with the product assessment. So for uh, for the product is to be unique. It has to be a high value product that is known and understood by, by most of the user, and this is something that automotive industry certainly has. So cars is very known, a very very good penetration, high penetration, everyone uses a car, so it's there. 
uh, loyal user base, this is the second uh, feature that uh, most of the OEMs, well some of the OEMs, especially the larger one, may declare that they actually have. And if we get back to your Apple example, so you may actually argue that there, the fact that Apple is successfully transitioning from, from the product to the platform was simply, simply because they have one of the most loyal and unique user base uh, out there. So for Google, for instance, they never had this, this kind of, uh, kind of Google user base. That seems to be uh, in place, well, at least to a certain degree for, for most of the automotive companies. Uh, and that's, that's already a fair, uh, a fair advantage. Uh, unique data sets. Well, that's again linked back to our sessions uh, this morning. Uh, we have uh, a developing uh, technology for, for different sensing, which provides a lot of the data that is, yes, works first of all for in car and vehicle application, but it also sees a lot of the things around them um, and might not be instantly used inside of the car. But if you figure it out how to back this data, stream it back to the cloud, and figure it out how to monetize this data in this cloud, then it will be an additional, very, very valuable, um, very valuable stream of, of the revenue. To give you some of a specific example, like how can you uh, benefit from having a lidar on your car? So, um, one of our customers is doing the following uh, following um, use case. They wanted to provide the uh, the users with their uh, free parking slot search and service. So basically, your car, if you are pointing to some destination, will hint you that there are a few parking slots that is available in, you know, in some of the cities, especially in the European Union, you, you bet that this is you know, a pre super premium services, right? So uh, in order to do that, how do they do that? Effectively, they, they employ, they, they sensor, they, well, it's not specifically a LIDAR service a sensor per se, but they employ their the sensors on the car from their own fleet that is streaming data back to the cloud. They locate their uh, the blanks, the, the clearance between the different cars in the specific areas, and send this the map this data onto their uh, into, onto the map. They figure out the amount of parking parking spaces uh, in that specific area, and then all of a sudden they have uh, an information that this parking slot is available there. Uh, well, good option, fair enough. Okay, so then you can basically employ all of your fleet of the same of the same brand to exchange this information uh, effectively. But unfortunately, not car, well, car is not everywhere, right? Um, so if you want to take a, a benefit and leverage the same data sets from, from other co co company vendors, then you need to somehow to align with them, and you need to somehow to trade this data in a fair manner. Um, so that will be a, a, an, an economical incentive attached to this data exchange that will can, can effectively benefit from, uh, from each other. So exclusivity is the next feature, um, which is providing a unique uh, access to your users. And as I uh, already said, that once their, the autonomous driving is going to be out there, you'll get a very isolated and very unique access to the specific users that is right now uh, taking a ride of, of your car and you can entertain them in, in a very different ways. Uh, the data features. Uh, besides this example that I just recently drawn with their empty, um, empty slots, uh, parking slots searching, what I'm still missing in, in the industry is that it looks like the automotive is looking for more and more advanced uh, sensing technology, but it is less thinking of how do they can use this outside of the original purpose. And that is, that is a unique thing that well, they might actually be missing in many, many cases. And that's, uh, that's something I would strongly recommend for OEMs that is sitting here and also for, uh, for, for smaller hardware and uh, software companies to think of how they can actually offer these extra benefits to, to their clients. Uh, security, that's another thing that well, you may actually argue that the whole automotive is, is around the build, building the security, but when it comes to the software, they honestly well, sucks badly. They, uh, they they do their a lot of uh, this this features on, on the different events, and you know the killer question is how what is what kind of a security framework do you have in place that you are fed by? This is actually installing the software inside of your car. 
getting access to the con boss, getting in control to some of your uh, life political issues. Um, and they, yeah, they, they can only, you know, uh, respond that there is a legal, from a legal framework in place, they, they do some reports we use, but certainly when it comes to proper security from the different angles, that's uh, still uh, a lot of things to do in that space. And most importantly, this is an ecosystem. As I've drawn in my example of the, of the empty, empty parking slots, um, it's way too rare uh, where automotive companies, they can really effectively trade with each other. They can really effectively build a certain uh, alliance which will benefit them all. So yes, you can draw an example of uh, certain standardization that already made in the industry, but that's uh, a little bit other example. Here, when it comes to the money, it's very difficult to enter them into a direct relationship, direct commercial, commercial relationship, and figure out the way how do they successfully you know, work with that. Um, when it comes to these three examples of Apple, Google, and Amazon, I'd like to show you how do they um, map um, the capabilities of their platform, and uh, whether this the same strategy is actually applicable is actually applicable for uh, for for the automotive. So Apple seems to be the most closest example. So they have their, their own product. They built up their, their own platform, which seems to be a, 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 a nice story to everyone because what I, uh, what I feel being in this business for about five years or so is like every car maker, every tier one is building their own platform. They want to make it like great, uh, fully functional, feature, feature full, and then they all of a sudden think that they, everyone will join their platform. That's not the case. So Apple is, is uniquely positioned because their platform was for the consumers. And as I said, these consumers was incredibly loyal to this company. Second problem is that um, the capabilities of their automotive company. Apple having this unique market positioning, they still suffered, uh, they still sacrificed a couple of billion dollars Investment into the into the, the platform. It's uh, this is the money that automotive comp not an, every automotive company can can actually afford. Uh, and even by having this money, it's if they spend about ten years or so before they actually reach the break even and make this uh, this this ecosystem unsuccessful as successful as it is, as it is right now. What is less understood by automotive when they building their own um, uh, uh, they own platform is that if they, they really succeed, one of their outcome of this uh, success will be that they have to uh, to be solely responsible for all of the risk that is imposed by this platform used to, to, to the external market. And that is something that not enough by every automotive uh, company is actually willing to, to undertake. So if you are solely responsible for whatever is happening with the data on this platform, with the functionality of this platform, oh, well, not sure. Google took their slightly different option. They, they actually went through their um, open source initiative. They in, in, empowered a lot of, uh, lot of uh, uh, third parties to, to develop and design their uh, they, they technology. And this is something that really automotive can also do, uh, speaking about the um, capabilities inside of the companies. The risk is a little bit less, but then it actually getting back us to the point where for automotive, there is a very few examples where they can successfully um, align with each other and persuade the common goals. Part of the standardization, I would say, especially for the software, when there is a competing interest, where there is competing um, ideas, uh, that's unlikely to be the case. Um, Amazon, at the same time, uh, decided for their to opt out for their for the third option instead of trying to make their, their, their digital store available for everyone, they decided that they will go a little bit aside of this picture. So instead of uh, uh, repeating and creating an end value product, they actually focus on the middleware and provide the services that is easy for any companies, not only in the e-commerce space, but uh, as their history shows even in their automotive and others, to actually use and leverage their large scale uh, data centers that they, they built around the world, uh, and they build up their number of uh, 
components, standard components, and invited all of the third party smaller companies to actually feature their platform with uh, a lot of the different things uh, on, on their platform. And that is something that can be easily mapped into their, into their um, scale of, of the automotive development. So what we have here is that we have a, an embedded to cloud solution that is break out into a four components like a data from the data generation to their data use cases. So this is about in-vehicle data generation and data processing. This is about the, about the data storage and data access management, the platforms that processes and visualize the data up to their um, up to the application space where their the companies can actually use this, this data for some maybe not even automotive uh, automotive applications. And if you try to draw a strategic importance of these assets, of these different assets, well, all of a sudden you will come up with something like that. So, of course, the data generation and this new sensing technology is going to be very much uh, important for, for OEMs. This is simply their DNA. This is simply they need to be to be a part of in order to, to remain to remain competitive. And this is connected to uh, autonomous or, or, uh, autonomous driving. This is connected to electricity. And all other parts. So this will remain relatively important, and that's that's for a lot of money. But when it comes to the data storage and data injection, and farther down the line, when it comes to their uh, data processing, standard data processing, say the vision components or I don't know, uh, and mapping components, that that's something that automotive is not really don't consider as their um, as their as the core asset. Uh, and then in the future, if you think about like using this data for some of the non-automotive non -automotive cases, then it might actually be becoming, again, uh, even more uh, strategically important for automotive companies. So this middle block seems to be a little bit redundant for, for automotive companies. And here I come to a very specific example how this idea may be implemented in the practice and already been implemented in the practice. With some of our large, uh, largest key product, all key technologies, they build what they call open location platform that is consist exactly the same as built-in blocks that remains in the middle part of the of the chart that has just recently recently built. Uh, this is a new type of a platform offering for digital transformation. It opens for all opens for all OEMs and key ones. It's focusing on data pipelines, processing, data enrichment. It contains uh, a marketplace where apps and data sets can be traded uh, between the different, different parties. So eventually a large OEM such as a BMW or a Audi can sell this data, their data to smaller startups and vice versa. And that not, do not require any direct commercial relationship. You don't have to go through their uh, procurement uh, process with, with this company. So basically the marketplace is already there and you can leverage the functionality of this of this marketplace that of, of this platform. Uh, it of course contains all of the data that traditionally here technologies provide to the uh, to their clients. This is a mapping, uh, that's uh, navigation, routing, and other kind of services. But that's not about the navigation. This is about their data and the marketplace to essentially effectively exchange with their um, with information. So speaking about the value for a smaller ISVs, such as a startup that we're seeing here in the audience, what you can do, guys, is that essentially you know may not only sell the hardware that sits inside of the uh, inside of the um, vehicle, but you can actually build up their wider range of a solution that actually spans and integrated within this this platform that implements a very specific pipeline for processing your data, and you can trade your data, whether this is a, a data belonging to your customers or maybe generated by your equipment and effectively exchange this data and monetize this data through this platform. Um, okay, to sum up, um, car generated data, this is the main future of the future value for, for automotive things, not the car itself. Uh, if you extend and embrace innovation around the sensors, you'll have a lot more things to sell and to think of how you can monetize this data. You can invest into a sibling industry such as logistics and transportation and tourists and whatever, whatever else to actually benefit and leverage this data set that you generate 
uh, through, their, uh, through the mobility use cases. You should look into the future of transportation, but not in the single car. And if you seek for alliances with your key ones and even with your competitors, that you as a company might be even more successful than you would just be playing this alone. And I beg you, don't create your own plan. This is just a way too hard and way too unsuccessful attempt. And if you want, we can help you to get the best value out of, it, out of those platforms that is already there. It's simply because of the reason that we, this is in the core of our value proposition to automotive, because we accelerate their transformation of automotive company from the product to their to the data companies. We can deliver at scale. Currently, we uh, we are holding for over. 1,300 employees, engineers that, that's mainly situated in Ukraine, uh, in spread in five different delivery centers. Uh, the specific feature about ourselves is that we are 60% automotive. We are focusing on the DAC region. We've been in this business since 2000, uh, 2002. So pretty, pretty substantial experience, pretty big uh, expertise in that area. And we are proud to be one of the fastest growing company in Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, again, again, like always, any questions here? Should I ask you first? <laughs> um, so, any questions? So that's how do you define a platform really. So, um, well, for me, the platform definition is that something that you uh, you can where you can basically uh, combine a set of a, a set of a different offering and set of a different players and make them effectively trade uh, with with each other. Either way, it's uh, like maybe they're servicing each other, they maybe sell the data to each other, sell the product to each other. That's the definition of the platform. And in, in fact, in this, if you really keen to and follow our, our our blog, we'll, we'll write there a lot of stories about companies you will probably never heard of, but they are really interesting, just in the perspective of automotive, how to convert from from the product to uh, to, to ecosystem players. And yes, yeah, so ecosystem is one of the example where where you can basically have uh, uh, a, a very robust offering that is attached to a certain like, <coughs> system. Um, like, like environment, um, but the platform in this case in automotive, I you know tend to believe that this is uh, going to be more successful in case, for instance, like here, uh, rather than having an, an open source and open and you know crowdfunded uh, technology in place that is going to be you know as successful as the, some of these proprietary ones. So, so you for you is 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 a platform. It's not for me. It's for for, for everyone. Yes, that's that's the, what they say. It's not my it's like look. I actually brought you this by example because we actually contributed to this platform. I have no personal attachment to no, no. To, to that to that no, platform no. features. Yeah, that's that's one of their example simply because it's it's but in the best way illustrates their the idea that automotive companies may actually use a third parties with this middle block of their data ingestion, data storage, data access management and processing and leverage the standard functionality out of this platform instead of like trying to rebuild, you know, and focus on things that is not like a core, the core features of the automotive companies. Do you see other platforms like this? 
I think yes. now for the Indian to be excluded the only, but like what do you think is more common than the other? Yes, but yes, there are plenty of examples where there are alternatives and we can, yeah, we can discuss what, what are the, the speeches and what are the difference between those. Yeah, there are, like, like I'm not saying that this is a certain uh, champion, no, but that's certainly one of the like, best bets, I think, if you want that. One more question. I have another one. You were talking to me about the uh, debate uh, you know, the platforms and, and things in relation to the past. Uh, you made a lot of history around the past where a lot of things are. People are talking about the past. Yep. But imagine that you have so many cars uh, in the network of all these and then into the things where you may become the other. Well, first of all, thanks to the solutions like the guys that over there, they, there might be a case that you, you really, you know, having uh, a streams of, of the data which is way less, uh, way less in the size uh, than, than it would be like if you spam in the raw data. That's the, the first thing. Uh, but if you, if you think about my, my opinion about the future of the car connectivity, so the 5G, uh, it's, it's less known. But 5G is actually uh, have their, their embedded uh, uh, standards for a mesh networking. And the mesh networking, this is something where you can actually establish a peer-to-peer -peer technology of data transmission. And what is really important for the cars, uh, for the specific application of the car, is actually to, to have the best connection to a nearby car, car, uh, cars next to you. So then you can effectively exchange the information about the sensors, about potential threats, about potential, I don't know, holes in the roads or you know, other dangers. And if you make this happen with the, yeah, hopefully with the 5G and adoption of the, the mesh networking, you can have an incredibly fast networking and very, very low well latency uh, in their geoposition uh, transportation systems. Thank you, Danny Bob. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, speaker, which is Dennis Muller.